the American Broadcasting Company Radio Network presents Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy have entered a laboratory on the planet Mars to capture a criminal. With ray guns drawn, they advance toward their foe, who suddenly darts behind a high-frequency generator. He's trying to get out the door, Commander. After him, Happy, before he gets away. Yes, sir. I can't move. You're in a high voltage field. Throw down your gun. I can't. We'll be back in a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol story, Voyage to the Future. Obligation. It's a big word. What does it mean? Debt, perhaps? Duty? Yes. Necessity? Certainly. And for young men between the ages of 17 and 18 and a half with a military obligation, the National Guard offers many advantages and opportunities. If you enlist in your local National Guard unit, you may start your training right there at home. There's no need to interrupt your work or school. And as long as you maintain a satisfactory standing, you will not be placed on active duty unless your unit is called in a national emergency. Inquire about the unlimited opportunities the National Guard offers you by contacting your local armory. Preparedness now is a safeguard against the future. Do your part by enlisting in the National Guard. Now today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, Voyage to the Future. Commander Corey has captured a criminal who has accidentally made an astounding discovery. The same hyperspace mechanism that enables star drive ships to travel enormous distances can also be used to send the ship back through time to any period in the past. An accomplice of the captured Dr. Scarno managed to escape with a pirate treasure that had been brought forward through time from the 16th century. At the Terra spaceport, Buzz and Happy are taking Dr. Scarno into the star drive ship in which the criminal scientist made his remarkable discovery. All right, Scarno, before we blast off, let's get a few things straight. You're still in custody, understand? Yes, Commander. You're here because you're the only one who knows how to use the hyperspace mechanism to travel through time. To cooperate, you'll be speeding up your rehabilitation system. You'll be a free man, I guess, soon. Just tell me what you want me to do. I want you to help us locate Phil Bristol. But he hasn't got a star drive ship. I don't have the slightest idea where he is. No, but you've got a good reason for wanting to catch him. I have. Happy means the pirate treasure. You mean I get to keep it? After you complete your treatment at the rehab center, it's yours. You dug it up and you're back in the 16th century. Since you don't have any laws at present governing time travel, the gold is yours by right of discovery. Well, that's very generous of you, I must say. You bet it is, Scarno. Well, Scarno, here's my plan to capture this thing. After we blast off from Terra, we set a hyperspace vector for the planet Earth. About two days back in time. But Commander Bristol is in the present. I know. He disappeared from the spaceport in Andy's Mountains two days ago. And you were on your third trip back in the 16th century. Yes? So? Within an hour or so, we know when he blasted off. And if we go back to that time, we can see him escape. And you think we can stop him? Prevent him from doing something he already did two days ago? That I don't know. Perhaps we can get a line on where he headed when he left the spaceport. Well, we're cleared for blast off, sir. Space control just signaled. But it would be dangerous to use this ship. It was in bad shape when you stole it. Yes, but I've had it checked. Mechanically, it's spaceworthy. The hyperspace computer is out of alignment. But that may be the reason the ship is able to travel in China. Is the computer capable? No. That's the way it was the last time we used it. All right, prepare for blast off. Half close ports. Close ports. Fire jets. Fire jets. Up, ship, and away. We're up to star drive velocity, Commander. All right, Matt. Scarno, have you set the hyperspace vector? Yes. We should emerge near Earth with a time coordinate of minus 51 hours. Good. You can see Earth as it was at 1,400 hours two days ago. I'm cutting into star drive. How do you feel, Scarno? Well, sir, a little dizzy, but I don't think I'll black out this time. We're probably getting used to the hyperspace transition. 
Happy, ready to check Earth with the view scope. Yes, sir. Hey, we're going back into regular space already. Strano, your job is finished for the time being. Just sit back and relax. There's the Earth. Not a focus of view scope on South America. You'll vector in a few thousand DUs nearer the planet, then. Well, what if we check Bristol's spaceport and he isn't there? You mean we miscalculated the time. Let's go back an hour, sir. Take a minute. We'll be shipping the starboard view ship outward bound from Earth. Take that, get it tight and fast. Yes, sir. Let's try the cruiser. Class C. Just try to ship it up the strip in the Zambi's port. Is that right, Scarno? Yes. Increase sensitivity and get the register number half. This will ship was ETC 504S. Maybe he changed it. I doubt that he had time. I can just make it out, sir. It's uh, ETC. 504S. That's good to ship, all right. Hey, if we change vector, we can be on him in a few minutes. Just a tight time hacking in by space appearance. Commander Corey aboard Star Drive Cruiser JS-14, calling Phil Bristol aboard private cruiser EPC 504S. Commander Corey to Bristol. No response. Hey, that changing speed or vector? Pretty much here, you. Hey, maybe a warning shot of the space boat here. Oh, I forgot. The ship is mine. I wouldn't use it anyway, huh? I don't think it would have any effect. Well, why not? For him, we may not exist in this part of space. The ship is now a time machine. We can see out and look at the past. But Bristol being in the past can't see us. There's one thing we can do. And that's follow Bristol's ship. We're gaining on him, sir. I guess you were right about him not being able to see us. Well, he'd be changing vector or something like that. He could be on a Mars trajectory. We'll follow him and make sure. Right, sir. Bristol's heading for Mars. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he's going to land at Lowell City. Lowell City. Strano, do you know if Bristol has any contacts in Lowell City, any place he might hide? Yes, he mentioned a pal named Norman Betson. Who is this Betson? What is he doing? Anything that pays a profit for very little work. At the front, he's an aerial prospector. You know, he flies over land with electronic probes searching for precious metal. That sounds like honest work. You don't know Betson. All right, it's now minus 50 hours, 40 minutes. Set up the hyperspace computer to return to our present train. But that's more than two days from now. Bristol may be somewhere else by then. We can't get a lead on him from Betson. He'll backtrack in through time. Now get busy, Scarno. Set a vector for Mars. Present time. Ormond Betson's laboratory in Lowell City is small but well equipped. The array of ore samples, charts, and testing devices indicate that Betson is a serious, capable expert on metals. At this moment, he is examining some coins handed him by Phil Bristol. Yeah, they're gold, all right. Of course they are. But look at them. Look at the dates on them. They're genuine Spanish coins minted in the 16th century. They look too new to be genuine, Bristol. A coin collector who knows his business would just laugh at you. They're 14 centuries old, I tell you. And I've got a whole chest full of them. <laughs> a real pirate treasure. You've stumbled on some of Captain Kidd's hidden loot. <laughs> Really, Bristol, I'm insulted. I think they tried to pass such a phony job of counterfeiting off on me. That's a listen. I know this is going to sound crazy, but these are the real thing. They were transported from the past into the present. That's why they look new. Oh, sure, sure. I should have known. They're right out of the 16th century. If I'm lying, I hope a bolt of lightning strikes me dead. <laughs> oh, you sure jumped. <laughs> what was it? What was it? Nothing to be alarmed about, Bristol. If you don't get close to that machine over there, <laughs> I'm charging up some fake delirium. Oh, what's the idea? Yeah, I plant the stuff on some land a friend of mine owns. We sell the valuable property to a sucker. And we split the profits. Oh, great. But, but is it dangerous, the machine, I mean? You're near the machine during a charge and you're holding a piece of metal, you get knocked across the room, that's all. In another hour, I'll have some fake delirium, and we'll test out like a real thing. That's more than I can say for your uh, Spanish coin, Justin. You've got to believe me. I've been waiting here in Lowell City for two days when you got back from Venus. These aren't fakes. Dr. Scarno accidentally discovered a way to travel into the past. Dr. Scarno? Yes, he stole a star drive ship. A hyperspace computer was out of adjustment. And he ended up in the year 1591. Mm. He figured out how to control it. Now he can use the ship to travel in time as well as through space. Yeah. Where is Garner now? Well, I guess he's still back in the 16th century. He's 
Bobby looking for me. What? That's why I need your help. Scarno left the treasure chest with me while he made another trip into the past. And you double-crossed him? You idiot! For one little chest full of gold, you ruin a chance to make millions. Talk about killing the goose that laid the golden egg. But listen, I, I didn't want to get mixed up with Scarno. The space patrol will be after him for what he did to Commander Corey and the cadet. Well, what did he do to them? He's going to drop them off in the 16th century. Drop them off? <laughs> oh, what a marvelous idea. <laughs> I sure got a hand it to Doc Scarno. <laughs> With Corey back in the 16th century, Scarno won't have to worry about him being here in the 30th. But Scarno's still on the spot. Corey's got friends. Sure. And so has Scarno. Go to the next room, Griffin. Go on, get moving. I, 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 it's just that I wasn't expecting a visit from the top brass. I mean, it, it isn't every day I get a visit from the commander-in-chief of the space patrol, sir. Are you Armand Betson? Uh, yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'm looking for Phil Bristol. Phil Bristol? I don't know anyone by that name. We have it on good authority that you and Bristol are friends. <laughs> That's really funny, Commander. Who told you that? A crook who calls himself Dr. Scarno. Scarno? Oh, I thought he... Hey, hey, Commander, look. Here on the desk. What is it? Man? Gold coins. Spanish coins. Dated in the 1500s. <laughs> Just some imitation. They're for um, uh, an exhibit uh, a friend of mine is arranging. Let me see. Hmm. Uh, you see, this friend of mine has a hobby, uh, duplicating coins of the past. You can tell by their new appearance that they're not meant to be the real article. They're just, just artistic copy. These are the real thing, that hmm. What? If you believe it or not, it doesn't matter, but... They proved that Bristol was here. Where is he? But, but he was telling the truth after all. Scarno did go back into the past. That's right. Yeah, and he tried to Shanghai us back to the 16th century. And at present, he's safely locked up in the compartment of the star drive ship at the spaceport. Tell us where Bristol is, or we'll be joining Scarno. Now, don't try to get away, Desmond. We'll use our ray guns. You won't find Bristol if I'm unconscious. After him, happy before he gets away. Yes, sir. Hey, I, I, I can't move. You're in a high voltage Throw down your gun. I, I can't. I... Yeah, quite a shock, wasn't it, gentlemen? When you recover, you'll get another kind of shock. From Doc Scarno. We'll return to today's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Boys and girls, here's a little problem. How long does it take to cross a street? Five seconds? Ten seconds? Well, that may be the right answer if you're careful to cross at the corner and wait for the traffic light. But if you cross in the middle of the block, it may take you weeks to get to the other side. Yes, weeks. Weeks spent in the hospital or in bed at home with broken bones and bruises that come from being in an automobile accident. Don't forget, the motorist doesn't expect to find anyone in the middle of the block. He may not be able to stop in time. That's why it may take weeks from the moment you start across the street until you finally reach the other side. The second you might save isn't worth those weeks you might lose. So be careful. Cross with the light and only at corners. Remember, the life you save may be your own. Now back to today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, Voyage to the Future. Buzz and Happy trailed the fugitive Phil Bristol to a laboratory in Lowell City on the planet Mars. Bristol's associate, Ormond Detson, at first denied all knowledge of the wanted man, but the presence of ancient Spanish coins proved Detson's story to be false. Faking an attempt to escape, Detson lured the space patrollers into a high-voltage field, stunning them with a strong electric shock. Now, Detson and Bristol, the two criminals, securely bind Buzz and Happy. I am good and tight, Bristol. Later, we'll gag him. How oh, they happen to come here? Scarno's plan misfired. Oh, he's got Scarno locked in the star drive ship of the spaceport. Okay, I'm tied up. Let's get out of here. No, no. We're going to the spaceport and rescue Scarno. That's are you crazy? We couldn't get into that ship. With Corey and the cadet with us, we can. They keep a blast gun in their ribs and make it look as though Corey was taking us to the ship. I don't like it. It's too risky. 
Light, relax, Corey. You're tied up. Better turn us loose. Happy and I aren't back at the spaceport very soon. You'll be having company. Don't worry. You'll be back all right, Corey. You're taking us to Skarno. If you try to tip off your men, we'll use a blaster on the first hero who tries to stop us. Knowing that any attempt to escape or spread an alarm would be fatal to themselves and to others, Buzz and Happy permit themselves to be taken to the Lowell City spaceport by Detson and Bristol. Unchallenged, the two criminals, apparently escorted by the space patrollers, board the Star Drive ship and release Dr. Scarno. Scarno immediately takes charge and forces Buzz to blast off. All right, Corey. Get away from the controls. Move. Okay, Scarno. Detson, you take over. Sure, Doc. Keep watching the viewscope. Beside any space patrol ship, we'll go into Star Drive. Look, why don't we go back into the past to pick up some more treasure? We'll be safe there. It isn't as simple as that. You have to know exactly where the treasure is. Yeah, and besides, you can't do anything while you're in the past that would change the real future. Hey, I've got it. We can't change the past, but we might change the future. The future hasn't happened yet. You got getting that, Doc. We knew what was going to happen tomorrow. Or next week, we could clean up on investments, government projects. Yeah, even sports events. But can you travel into the future? There's just one way to find out. Set the computer to a future time. And try it. Doc, let's take him off the list. We'll land this ship on Mercury. You know, a nice safe place with another spaceship handy in case we have to leave in a hurry. You, Bristol, will take this ship into the future. But I don't know anything about star drive or hyperspace vectors. The cadet does. We'll go with you. I'll give complete instructions on how to set a vector for the future and for your return. But, Doc, you can't trust the cadet. And I'm not so sure I can trust you. This is a chance for you to redeem yourself, Bristol. And keep the cadet locked up. He'll be your insurance in case you can't work the hyperspace. Now, just a minute, Scarno. Keep out of this, Corey. Doc, I got an idea. The Gantolis project on Venus. What about it? The government commission hasn't decided yet whether or not to okay the power project near Mount Gantolis. Go on. If they're supposed to go ahead with it, it'll open the whole valley to industry, mining, and farming. Everything. Yes, but there's another site under consideration. Look. We could look a month or two into the future. We know. That information be worth millions. That's brilliant. We'd clean up. Legitimately, too. Whichever way the commission votes, we'd be in on the ground floor. How do I find out how the commission will vote, even if I do get into the future? Now, listen, a new scam? No, you idiot. You merely fly over Mount Gantolis. There's activity there. Construction, mining. Then you'll know the answer. I'm warning you, Spano. I have this story. You're staying with Detson and me at our Mercury hideout. Let's ensure that that's good behavior with Crystal. You understand what I mean, Cadet? Yeah, sure. Good. All right, Detson. Get back to Mercury. In Scarno's hideout in a desolate region of the planet Mercury, Scarno stands by a space phone while Detson keeps Commander Corey covered with a blast gun. The three men look through a window watching the star drive ship grounded 200 yards away. What's the matter with Bristol? I hope he's not having trouble with that cadet. You just watch, Corey. Down to Bristol. Bristol, do you read me? Come in. Bristol here, Doc. Just lock the cadet up. All ready to blast off. All right, listen. If you want to live to see the real future, don't try to double-cross me again. Down out. Doc, if this works, we'll own the entire United Planet. Right. Knowledge is power, they say. You'll have knowledge. Knowledge no one else can get. <laughs> There they go. Into the future. <laughs> Into our future. If Happy doesn't come back, Scarno, you won't have it. Locked in the compartment, Happy feels the acceleration of blast off. Then, later, the eerie hum of the hyperspace mechanism as the ship goes into star drive. Once more, the ship emerges into regular rocket drive. Still, Happy has no way of knowing where he is, either in space or in time. All right, Cadet, come on out. I need you up forward. Where are we? We're supposed to be over Venus. Hurry up. I need help to get back into Star Trek. Can you are in the future? Yeah, yeah. And remember, I got you covered. Just check the hyperspace computer. Be sure I got it set up right for a return to regular time. How far into the future are we? According to Scarno's calculations, two months. 
All right, get to work. Hey, the view screen. Is that Mount Gantos? Never mind that. Your job is a computer. You look at all the activity down there in the valley. Well, that shows the commission voted to go all out on the Gantolas project. The rockets. Look at Mount Gantolas. Smoke is pouring out of it. It's erupting. Yeah, what do you know? A volcano. If you look close at the view, you can see cracks in the smoke. Crystal, we've got to warn those people down there in the valley. There's a, there's a volcano eruption. A uh, quake. Never mind. Get back to Scarno. Scarno can go kiss a comet. If we warn those work crews in time, they can get out of the valley before that hot lava comes pouring down on them. Get away from that space, phone cadet, or I'll use this ray gun. That won't get you back to Scarno. For the love of Jupiter, Bristol, if you don't think anything of human life, at least think of your future investment. Uh, all right, go ahead. But make it fast. Don't worry. Urgent. Emergency. This is Cadet Happy aboard cruiser JS-14, now over Mount Gantolas, Venus, calling Gantolas Project and all space patrol units in the Venus sector. Emergency. Attention all Venus stations. Mount Gantolas is erupting. Clear the lower valley immediately. Cadet Happy calling all Venus stations. Acknowledge. Repeat. This is Cadet Happy aboard Star Drive ship JS-14. Sound disaster alert in the Gantolas area. All right, boys, start your plunge good deed. That's enough. But Crystal, maybe they didn't hear you. Maybe they can't hear you. They're in the future. We're from the past. Come on, fix up that hyperspace vector. We're going back to report to Scarno. As the star drive ship settles down near the hideout on Mercury, Scarno sends Detson out to bring Bristol and Happy into the hidden stronghold. Scarno jumps Happy toward Commander Corey. You two stand over there. This tricky move from either of you, and I'll use this blaster. Happy, are you all right? Yes, sir. I think so. I'm glad. Bristol, did you make it? Did you get into the future? Yes, so. Well, what about Mount Gantolis? What did it look like? I... I don't remember. Cadet, you tell me. The Gantolis project goes through. I don't know. There's something. I think I try to remember. Maybe it was a dream. I wish I could think of it. Donna, they seem to be in a state of shock. I don't know why. All I want to leave men is a simple answer. Did they get into the future? It's a blank from the time we went into hyperspace until we came out. I must have had a dream. Horrible dream. Almost a nightmare. Hmm? About what? Okay. No, sir. You better remember or I'll beat it out of you. Hold it, Scarno. Maybe it's impossible to bring anything back in the future. Not even a memory. Why not? Crystal and Happy are back in the present. Memories return to the same condition they were in before. Scarno, give me that gun. I'll beat the memories out of Crystal. Get Scarno hat. Yes, sir. All right, Detson, had enough. Yeah. This is our cold. Well, I think the rest of started fighting among themselves. Hey, what's the matter? Where's, where's Scarno? He ducked out while he was busy with his camera. I see him now. He, he's nearly to the ship. Hey, I'll go after him. I know, Happy. You'd never make it. I'll warn the mentor you must to watch for him. Keep an eye on this one, Betsy. Yes, sir. Yeah. I wish I could remember what happened aboard that ship. I have a vague recollection of a terrible fear. There goes Skyner. Pentacory Inspector G4 Mercury calling Mercury City Space Patrol Headquarters. Corey to Mercury City Headquarters. Urgent, come in. Mercury City Space Patrol Headquarters. Commander Corey, Captain Collinger. Captain, sound on all units alert. Intercept Star Drive Cruiser JS-14, just blasting off from Sector G-4, Mercury. Doc Scarno is aboard. Star Drive Cruiser JS-4, yes, sir. Get into action fast. Scarno may go into hyperspace as soon as he reaches Star Drive velocity. Very good, sir. Do you need any help for you? Uh, no, thanks. There's a ship here. Happy and I will bring in two of Scarno's men. And the happy is there with you. Yes, why? We intercepted a strange message on a hyperspace receiver. The boy's claiming to be that happy sent out a disaster. Me? A disaster call? Captain, this is a hyperspace pickup? Uh, yes, sir. Somebody must be playing practical jokes. We sent out a Venus squadron to investigate just in case. Investigate what? Mom can't do it. Uh, here's a magnet they recording of the message. Want to hear it? Yes, go ahead. And it happened calling all Venus stations emergency. Mom can't pull it to the rock. Clear the lower valley immediately. And it happened aboard Star Drive ship JS-14. Sound disaster alert in the Gantolas area. Well, that's it, sir. Venus headquarters sent the to Gantolas, and there's nobody in danger. Valley's deserted. There's no sign of an eruption. No, Captain. There isn't now, but there will be in two months. I, I, I beg your pardon, sir? And never mind, Captain. I'll contact you later. Hurry up. Commander, it's beginning to come back. 
five people. I saw them when the volcano erupted. The, the lava was falling down right over them. Mm-hmm. The volcano may erupt too much. There'll be no one in the bank. That's easy. Okay. I had no idea the hyperspace transmitter was on. Well, how come it how come it could get through from the future back to the present? I'm not sure, Hap. Perhaps in hyperspace, time has no past, present, or future. Maybe just one big no. then, then there won't be a disaster? You mean I really changed the future? Hap, everything you do changes the future to some extent. That's what makes living fun. <laughs> yes, sir, you're right. And you know, I uh, I sort of hope that the patrol ships don't get Skarno. I like the fun of catching him ourselves. We will. You don't need a trip into the future to know the answer to that. A preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure in just a moment. Modern day aviation has made vacations in Europe commonplace. It also has made possible intercontinental war. Of course, our country has a protective radar system, but there are gaps in this defense screen which can be penetrated by low flying planes. To cover these blind spots, the Air Force has organized the Ground Observer Corps the civilian component of the Air Defense Command. It operates 24 hours a day in observation posts and filter centers, reporting the presence and activity of unidentified aircraft. Right now, 150,000 more part-time volunteers are needed, men, women, and teenagers. You're asked to join. The silver wings of the Ground Observer Corps are a proud symbol of civilian participation in our defense. Contact your nearest civil defense center. Now a preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy have been taken back millions of years through time and forced out of Skarno's spaceship in a tropic jungle on the planet Earth. Stay clear of that car pit, Hap. Get stuck in that stuff, you'd have a hard time getting in. Oh, the rockets. What was that? What I think it is, we're in trouble. Hey, Commander, look. Coming out of the jungle. It's, it's a monster. Biggest dinosaur that ever lived. It must be 50 feet high, I'm sure. Wow. Well, look at those teeth. It could gobble us up in one bite. Saw it, Happy. Run! Be with us next week for the thrilling Space Patrol story The Monster from the Past. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron, Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson. Executive producer, Helen Moser. Other players were Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, and Tom McKee. Dick Wesson speaking. Don't forget to tune in next Saturday at this same time for an exciting adventure on Space Patrol. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.